get the meeting started. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this meeting, the Illinois Board of Review for today, uh, Thursday, March 30th, 2023. I am Kenneth Woodson, Chair of the Illinois Board of Review. Uh, we've just preliminarily, everyone has been muted, principally because uh, uh, all the background noise provides a bit of a distraction. And so that uh, in order to not to do that, We've muted everyone and we've uh, asked you to remain muted unless until your case is called. Uh, we will introduce the board as well as the other panelists, after which the law department will uh, have a spokesman give us some preliminary uh, status of the, of the cases listed today. Uh, after all of that is done, we will hear uh, cases that we need to go forward. Uh, I would ask everyone present, please pay close attention as the cases are called. If your case is called, the address or your name, uh, and if the status is noted as moot or moot complied, that means that the case has been resolved for today. So there's no need for you to remain on uh, the call and to remain until the hearing ends. However, this, these are public hearings. So if you choose to stay on to them, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I just want you to know that once you've heard your status, you may uh, decide to move on and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, so what we will do now is introduce ourselves. Again, I'm Kenneth Woodson, Chair, Board Chair. Ralph Pincus, Board Member. Roger S. Tennant, Senior Board Member. Washington, Board Member. Cortez Patton, Board Member. Ryan McSherry, Board Council. Richard Wade, Board Administrator. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone present from the city who will provide us with a list of the status of cases currently for today's list? Since the list, uh, there's three of us here from uh, the Department of License and Inspections today. And uh, since the cases were so limited uh, for us, we'll each be presenting our own case. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So I, right. I can I can begin. Yeah, uh, since you're on, yeah, you might yes. as well start. Uh, so uh, for a uh, case uh, matter number three, HA 2022-001720 um, at 1701 South 24th Street, the appellant is Anisha Silva Wernick, uh, WN Construction, LLC. There's been an agreement reached in this case. Um, that's been forwarded to the board. Um, it's for a city of firm and an agreement uh, for $300 uh, of fines. $300 fines. Okay. Is anyone present representing the uh, uh, WN Construction, LLC? No, but uh, a signed agreement was presented to the board. Okay. Thank you. Well, then I'll pull the board regarding HA-2022-001720-1712. Uh, Anisha Civil Wernick doing business as WN Construction, City Affirmed, $300 fine as per the agreement. City Affirmed with a $300 fine as per agreement between the parties. City Affirmed for the agreement of a city of a fine of $300. City affirmed per agreement with three hundred dollar fine. Oh, okay. City affirmed per agreement with a three hundred dollar fine. Thank you very much, Ms. Scouts. Yes, and uh, I also have case number two HA twenty twenty two zero zero one seven three five at uh, 533 East Hunting Park Avenue. The appellant is John Morrison. There has also been an agreement reached in this matter. Um, I'm still waiting for the appellant to sign me, uh, to send me the signed agreement, but uh, the agreement is for a city of firm um, with a $500 fine. Uh, just so that I'm clear, what address are you, uh, did you reference in this matter? A 533 East Hunting Park Avenue. That's not what I have. Yeah, we have 642 Moore Street. 
Now, this is case number four Miss Skiles is referring to. Oh, my, my apologies. I'm glad. Am I right, Miss Skiles? Yes, I apologize if I said case number two. Yes, this is case number four, HA 2022 001735 533 East Hunting Park Avenue, the appellant being John Morrison. Okay, and there's an agreement uh, uh, between the parties. And what is the term? What are the terms? Yes, the terms are city of firm uh, with a $500 fine. City of firm, $500 fine. Okay. Um, just a note is that is the entity involved? Is there a corporation involved in this matter? There is. Um, he, they do uh, own, Mr. Morrison's the owner of Maximum Mechanical LLC. Um, so those, the violations were issued to an LLC. Thank you. And who's the attorney representing Mr. Morrison? He did not have, he does not have an attorney, but I uh, reached an agreement with, with him. I told okay. him he would need an attorney to represent him, but uh, we were able to reach an agreement. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll pull the board regarding HA 2022 001 735 533 East Hunting Park Avenue. John Morrison doing business as Maximum Mechanical. City of Firm per agreement with $500 fine. City of Firm with a $500 fine per agreement. City of Firm per the agreement with a $500 fine. City of Firm per agreement, $500 fine. City of Firm per agreement, $500 fine. Thank you very much. Ms. Gauss, anything yes. else? Yes, my final matter is number 14, uh, appeal number HA 2022-004684. That's at 2901 North 27th Street. The appellant is 2901 Anthony Inc. Um, they are represented by... Uh, John McCresh, who is present. I did reach out. The city's requesting a date. Um, one of our witnesses is unavailable today, and I did speak with Mr. McCresh, and there's no objection to that continuance request. Okay, Mr. McCresh, are you present? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, yes, afternoon. there is no objection, and uh, I'd also like to note, we were here, uh, I forget, uh, I think back in a month or so ago, and uh, there's a another case, uh, same facts or uh, tobacco license for this uh, client that's currently uh, in the Court of Common Pleas. And I just submitted a brief yesterday. I think there's a, a um, uh, maybe oral argument in June. So, if uh, we do, do not prevail in the common pleas court, this this case might be moot. And I, I think last time, that's why we uh, continued it. So uh, I, I would just ask that the continuance be put out further so that we can get a uh, an idea of what's going to happen with the common pleas court case. Okay. Ms. Giles, are you okay with that? Yes, we are in agreement with that. Okay. So we will uh, wait to... Schedule this one after we hear the outcome of the CCP uh, hearing on a separate matter with similar fact patterns. How, how long would that be anticipated? Amy? I think the, oral argument might be scheduled for June, so I think July would be would be safe. Okay, ninety days. I'll forgive it. Mm -hmm. That that would be that would be good. And and can I say one more thing? I just for some reason I don't think I got. And uh, Miss Giles reached out to me. Thank you, but I, I don't. I don't think I got notice of this today until I heard from Miss Skiles. I was here the the other time. It could have gone to spam or whatever, but I just okay. I, I did Mr. get Wade, the, I did get notice of the Mr. first Wade. hearing. Yeah, I asked Mr. Wade, the court, the, the administrator, to check in, see what's happening with that. Okay, make sure you you're noted. Um, it, could, it could have been on my end. So okay, uh, Miss Mr. McCreese, just one matter. Uh, the CCP case is the same uh, appellant? It's the same appellant, correct. I okay. think it was for a different year. So if okay. if they right. do if there if there wasn't renewed the year before, then it can't be renewed this year. So understood. Okay. Yeah. So so if we lose there, then this we might just withdraw this. I, I don't know. We'll okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a Thank good you. Okay. Can I be excused?
Yes, sir. Thank you. Notice was sent. There was? Okay. That must have, must have gone out. That was my fault. February 23rd. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, who's next? And that concludes my matters. I'll, I'll uh, pass it to my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, members of the board. Jim Kelly on behalf of the city. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Kelly. I have uh, just one that, that that will not be going. It's number 17, HA 2021-002601-3807 3807 Pulaski Avenue, Hun Yang Zhang. Um, that matter is uh, listed in error. Um, the okay. board originally heard that matter and made a decision in November of 2021, which was appealed to the Court of Common Pleas, um, which just decided last month. So I, I believe it's been listed in error. And I, that's been communicated to the board previously. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Kelly, curious, did the, uh, CCP make a decision in that matter? Yes. Yes, it did. Did it affirm the board or overturn the board? Affirmed the board. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yep. Anyone else? Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Woodson. Afternoon. Uh, Alexandra Athanasiadis on behalf of the city. Uh, case number six on the list, HA-2022-004391, 6145 Mulberry Street, Appellant David Lancaster. That matter has been withdrawn. Notice is withdrawn. Thank you. Case number seven, um, the city is prepared to move forward on. That's HA-2022-004618. 1669 Granite Street. The city um, will be moving forward on that, and the city's witness is Ernest Kinkle on that matter. Okay. Case number eight, HA 2022 003769, 1669 Granite Street. Uh, that matter is moot. Okay. Now it's the same address as number seven. Is it just the duplicate matter? Yes, they were not duplicate, Chairman Woodson. There were two separate notices of defect issued. Okay. Um, the one um, was withdrawn, so that one is moot, and the other um, stands, and that we're prepared to move forward on. Thank you. Sure. Case number nine, HA-2022-003863, 5736 North Kamak Street. That matter is moot complied. We comply. Thank you. Case number 10, HA-2022-004010, 5413 Irving Street. That matter is also moot complied. Um, and I received notification there was a continuance request for that matter. Um, but as it's moot complied, you know, I, yes. I don't think that's an issue. We're noted as moot complied. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And case number 11, HA-2022-003771, 1452 North 60th Street. That matter is moot complied. Thank you. Case number 12, uh, HA-2022-004681, 2441 Mutter Street. The city is prepared to move forward on that matter, and the city's witness will be Frank Francesco. Okay. Case number 13, HA-2022-003958, 2643 East Mayfield Street. That matter is moot complied. Moot complied, thank you. And case number 18, um, the city's prepared to move forward on HA-2022-004676, 5038 Chestnut Street. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, is anyone else? Uh, yes, uh, may it please the board, Leonard Reuter, the senior attorney for the city of Philadelphia. Uh, just preliminarily, I think you already have these, uh, but uh, number one on your list, appeal number HA 2022-001895, address 2330 Sansom Street, uh, appellant is Hammers Contractors, Inc. Uh, their attorney, Mr. Miller, submitted uh, to the board uh, a withdrawal of that appeal yesterday. Okay. So we know it is withdrawn. Correct. Um, number two on the list, HA 2022-002843, uh, 642 Moore Street, also Hammers Contractors, Inc. Uh, 
I submitted to the board uh, with Mr. Miller, copied uh, a settlement agreement that we reached uh, to have the matter marked city affirmed with a reduction of the fine to $500. $500 fine? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. We will then poll the board regarding HA-2022-002843-64-2022-00043. Hammers Construction Inc. City affirm per the agreement a five hundred dollar fine. City affirm with a five hundred dollar fine per agreement of the parties. City affirm per the agreement with a five hundred dollar fine. City affirm per agreement with a five hundred dollar fine. City affirm per the agreement with a five hundred dollar fine. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Water, anything else? Uh, yes, I believe uh, in. Case number 15, HA 2021-0015912101 2021 West Hunting Park Avenue. Uh, appellant is Jennifer Gomez Hardy. Uh, she is an attorney, but uh, it's her ap uh, appeal, and she is represented by Mr. Darwin Beauvais, who will be requesting a continuance, which the city does not oppose. Okay. Mr. Beauvais, okay. is that your request? Yes, and, and if the board can indulge me, and if I can share my screen, because I want to uh, get, I want to illustrate to the board the nature of our request. Uh, well, First so of Ms. all, Bobe, well, Ms. Gonna, Ms. 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 Bobe, yeah, before you say anything, Ms. Wash, I'm trying to shortcut some of this. Ms. Bobe, when yeah. there's a request for continuance, we, we really don't want to uh, get any of the facts on the record. The fact that you've made a request, we accept the fact that you have done a good job and Mr. Browder agrees with you, so we'll leave it at that. All right, so th then I, I asked that the board, uh, if their request could be for two weeks, okay. um, because we made a request to the city uh, regarding certain methodologies that the health department has come up with, whether or not um, the total list for tobacco licenses, which is a request that we've also made. And okay. we're looking for a, 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 a something from the health department that that focuses on the methodology so okay. the methodology, and, and the, a list of all the licensees and the total number of permitted licenses okay there's an agreement uh, where you've uh, come to the city to continue it for at least two weeks uh and you've worked out what additional data you want to share correct yeah okay yeah. Yeah, right, this, so we'll continue continue will, right, and we've agreed to make best efforts to provide I, the specific data that they have requested, um, uh, which is germane to the merits of their appeal. Um, there's other things that we're looking into, um, but uh, you know we'll try to get all that to them in in two weeks. I don't know if it's practical for this to get relisted in two weeks, but w whatever is at, at the board's pleasure, that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. So that matter is resolved. Always okay. a pleasure to see you, Mr. Bovey. Hey, likewise. Yep. Likewise. Have a good afternoon, sir. All right. Take care. Thank you. Um, do we have anything else, Mr. Rodder, from you? Uh, I do not have anything else. I have one other case that uh, will be going forward. Okay. Is there anyone else in the law department who wants to share, needs to share status of the case with us? If not, we will then go back up to the top of the list. And I think... Uh, uh, We'll start at number five. Is that uh, work, uh, Mr. Wade? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, thank you, Leonard Reuter, uh, F. Reuter, Senior Attorney for the City of Philadelphia. This is this is case number five, hearing appeal number HA 2022-002-684-1600 South 13th Street, Lisa Burgess Fry. Sorry, thank you, uh, Leonard F. Reuter for the city of Philadelphia. And I would ask that uh, city inspector Jian Chen be unmuted. And inspector Chen, if you could turn on your camera as well. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, who's representing the appellant? Ourselves. And Lisa. So Lisa, yes. Lisa Bergazi Fry and her husband Paul Fry. Okay, and this is a, a building permits issue. Is are uh, just so for preliminarily, I just want to check: uh, Are the two of you the owners of this property? I am the owner. Okay, all right, and Miss, uh, who will be uh, doing the testifying in this matter? Both of us. 
Okay. Uh, well, let me see if I can attack it a different way. Whose name is on the deed of the property? Yes, my name is on the deed of the property. Is your name the only name on the deed of the property? That is correct. Okay, so you will be the person, you're the appellant, you will testify. If you will need a witness, you can call uh, uh, Mr. Fry as a witness, okay? Okay, thank you. So the principal voice I want to hear will be yours. And so, Mr. Fry, you will not be allowed to jump in or offer a testimony unless you call it as a witness, understood? Understood. Okay, Ms. Fry, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn? Ms. Fry? Understood, yes. Lisa? Uh, yes. Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth so help you guys? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Roder? Uh, thank you. I'd like to call our first witness. Excuse uh, me, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Did we in, did we swear in uh, Inspector Chen? Not yet. Not, not yet. till he's been called. When Mr. Uh, Rada calls him, I'll swear in. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to call then uh, Inspector John Chen. Okay. Yes. Mr. Chen, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth that helps you guys? Yes. And just for the record, Mr. Chen, are you in a vehicle on the road? Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm in the vehicle, but not on the road. Okay, so I'm you're part. stationary, correct? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to affirm that if, in fact, you have to move, we can't have you testifying uh, if you move. We okay. need you to be safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chen, uh, could you just tell the board what your uh, position is with the city of Philadelphia? So I'm a building inspector for the L9 department. Okay, and how long have you been doing that? Uh, close to five years now. Okay, and in the course and scope of your duties as an inspector for the Department of Licenses and Inspections, did you uh, are you familiar with the property at 1600 South 13th Street? Uh, yes, the part oh. that I rolled up from the outside exterior. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Uh, I've never been inside the building. I've only been uh, on the outside. Okay, and are you uh, familiar then with, uh, in, in doing your exterior inspection of the property, uh, did you come to learn of any, uh, what you perceive to be violations of the Philadelphia Code? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to share my screen in just a second. Um, I apologize to the board. Uh, all right do you see the uh document that i'm that's on the screen yes okay a board and uh, members of the board can you see the document yes okay uh, and just for identification purposes we'll have this marked city c1 um, and what are we looking at here, Inspector? A violation. Okay, and when was this written? No, uh, May 27, 2022. Okay, um, that May 27th was the date you did the inspection? Yes. Okay, and was, was the, the, the notice itself uh, issued the next day? Yes. Okay, and I'm going down further, uh, and you don't need to read these uh, aloud, uh, but can you just tell the board um, what the nature of the violations were that uh, you discovered? Yes, uh, when I was doing an inspection, uh, I, I, was called out, I was called out there on a complaint regarding 16, uh, 1600 13th Street, and when I saw the violation, the complaint was the, a ductwork and opening that was, uh, how you say it, mm, on the party wall side because it was crossing the property line. Okay, what I'm gonna, works. sure. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch over. Now, can you see, can everybody see a photograph that we're showing on the screen? Not yet. Nope. Not yet. Hold on, let me. Uh... Oh, sorry. How about now? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to enlarge that as much as I can without it getting blurry. So uh, this 
what are we looking at here? Is duct work. I'm not sure what kind of duct work is it for. Okay, but so it is crossing the property line. Okay, and you're talking about this, and I don't know if you can see my cursor moving up and down. We're talking about this metal tubular like structure that's vertically going from what I guess is the first floor up to the roof. Yes. Okay. And it's, it's some kind of duct work or vent stack or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, with respect to these uh, air conditioning units that are protruding from the wall, was that part of the violation? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another document. I think I have to, unfortunately, I didn't have these all merged as a single document, so I have to share separately. Um, so just take me a sec. I apologize. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. Now I'm showing you another document. Um, and this, uh, if you can see, uh, does this appear to be a map showing the in the corner of Tasker Street and 13th Street? Can you see that, yes. Inspector? Yes. Okay. Now, the property uh, in question at 1600 South 13th Street, is that the corner property uh, that's at the top side of yes. this, of this uh, uh, view? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the ductwork, that and the uh, air conditioning units that you observed, uh, can you see where my cursor is? Yes. Okay, is it where I'm now pointing my cursor? Yes. Back, back so it's in the rear of the property. Uh, and, and just because it's, I believe it's been raised, uh, would you agree that um, this violation does not concern any of the exterior along the street side, is that right? Mm -hmm. does not so it doesn't issues. involve uh, a previously approved garage it doesn't approve any other potential encroachments on the sidewalk is that right yes okay so we're only talking about the duct work uh in the rear of the property now on is that correct yes okay now on this uh, diagram uh is your understanding that this line that where my you can see my cursor between mm -hmm. this property and the next property that line is the property line? Yes. Okay. Uh, and a wall that is along the property line, is that considered a party wall by definition? Yes. Okay. And this property that's next to it, just uh, below on the lower part of the screen, which I'll just represent to the board, is Southerly. Uh, I think it is. Anyway, it's on the lower side of the screen here. Um, is that... 1602 South 13th Street? Yes. Okay. So just, just to clarify then, so everybody understands, the duct work that you observed and the air conditioning units are cross over, they're protruding across the property line into the property that is part of 1602 South 13th Street. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to do one more document, which I can pull up. All right. Now, what are we looking at? What am I showing the board right now? Can you see that? There's a, there's a code section from the book. Uh, I believe it's the IPC book. Okay. Um, so this is this is the uh, uh, the probably the resident the residential building code. No, this is the commercial one. Okay. Um, now in this section here, uh, and is it your understanding that by the way that this is a rental property? That there are there multiple units in this building? Uh, I believe uh, when I saw it, it was listed as a commercial. I'm not sure what kind of property it is. I believe it's a rental property. Okay. Um, now, anyway, uh, and again, I'm uh, just so the board understands, I'm not introducing this as an exhibit, but merely demonstrative. It's a code. It is a building code section um, that we think the board 
can take notice of. So how is a property, how is a party wall defined in, in the code? Is it can, is it fair to say that a, a party wall is any wall that is located on a lot line between uh, adjoining buildings? Yes. Okay. And because it is, uh, does it does a party wall therefore also serve as a firewall? Yes. Okay. And is that one of the one of the reasons why uh, penetrations through a party wall uh, have to be permitted? There has to be a permit for that and. Um, it has to meet yes, the yeah. other requirements of the code. Yes. And it's to prevent the spread of fire from one, one property to the next. Yes. Okay. I have no further questions of uh, the inspector. I can stop sharing. And uh, I have no further wit wit uh, witnesses. I mean, I can sub sum it up in in closing if you if the board uh, likes, um, but uh, or. Um, Mr. Chair, you on mute? Mute. Oh, my apologies. I was on mute. Didn't realize it. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Ryder, we will wait till Ms. Fry puts her uh, case on. But Ms. Fry, do you have any cross examination of Mr. Chen um, based on his testimony? We do have documentation that we did submit to the city. Um, no, no, I'm sure. asking a different yeah. question. I'm asking oh. if you have any questions of Inspector Shin based on his testimony. If not, that's okay. We can get you. Yeah, I have no further questions other than the um, okay. The air conditioning unit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. If you don't have any further questions, then what we will then is invite you to uh, uh, present your understanding of the I'm facts. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I did have one additional question to, without, if there's no objection of Mr. Okay. Chen, I didn't. Uh, yes, please. I, I, I meant to ask just to clarify. I think it was it was implied, but I want to make it clear in the record. Uh, Inspector Chen, um, were you able to determine were were you able to find any prior building permits uh, for those uh, breaches in that party wall? Uh, I I can't find any on on anything in the record I saw in the in all Eclipse. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. That's it. No further questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Ms. Fry? Yes. Yeah. Please present the information you wanted to share with us. Yes. So um, just a little bit about the building. Um, the building has, I acquired it um, due to the death of my father two years ago. So um, this building has been in our family for over 40 years and has been residents um, have been occupying it. And there's a number of families living in there today. And just so that you know, there were um, renovations from my understanding done several years ago, like almost you know, 25 years ago that permits were filed. Um, and also um, uh, code of occupancies um, are documented with the city of Philadelphia. So all of that has been done. Um, so we did file the necessary documentation to allow people to come and live in this house, uh, into the apartment building. And also the, the event is for a broiler system that's there that um, is providing all of the heating and to the, to the people who live in the building. Okay. Uh, now, Ms. Brown, how did you respond or have you responded specifically to the violation notice though? Yeah. regarding the penetrations as, in the wall? As soon as we received the notice in the mail, we immediately filed, um, we went to the city to file a, um, um, a request for an appeal, basically. Um, so we filed all that and we gave all the documentation to that person um, with the, 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 the uh, zones, the permits and everything that were filed. So we gave them all that documentation. So what information do you have today that you will present in today's hearing, because this is your appeal hearing, that would provide us with what we need to uh, understand the pr prior approvals of those wall penetrations? We, yep, we already provided that when we No, 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 you, you misunderstand me. If you, uh, because you may not appreciate this, but because you aren't represented by an attorney, you're acting as your own attorney, which means that yep. you have to be prepared to present your evidence so we can see it in the hearing. It has to be done on the record. So do you have information you want to share with us? Yes. Um, let me 
if I can share my screen, if I'm allowed to, sure. to show you yeah, the absolutely. documentation that was presented as the city of sure. Philadelphia. The, the answer is okay. yes, you can share your, your, your okay. screen. <laughs> my first time here, so let me, um, I thought this was going to be shared already as part of the No, 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 Miss Ryan, uh, would you want to continue this case to get a lawyer? No, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the documentation that okay. was presented. So the only reason, only reason I ask you that is because I want you to understand that you are being held to the standard everyone else is in terms of trying to present the information so we can make it clear. Mr. Pincus, you have a question you want to bring? Yes, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Royer provided to us an exhibit package that included a variety of materials based on my experience that are from the zoning file for your property. Uh, and I believe that Mr. Reuter may have forwarded that documentation to you as well, Ms. Fry. Do you acknowledge receiving that documentation? That's what I submitted to them when I was doing the appeal. So that documentation consists of zoning applications going back to 1960. Uh, just a moment, 1983. Well, there was one from even before that. There was one from 19, um, give me one second, um, permit issued in uh, 19, well, it goes back. I mean, I wasn't even born then. Um, 1970, I think. Um, that's the first permit. Then there were permits in 1982 and 83, as well as a city ordinance regarding an encroachment dealing with the garage. Are those the documents that you're referring to? Yes, I am. So all of those documents, if I may just summarize, um, I looked through them, um, grant variances uh, by the city's zoning board for the four unit family use, and, and, and one of them is for the encroachment and the addition of garages, but none of those documents speak to authorizing, and this is what the city is, is saying, for any violation of a construction that, it, that affects the party line of the properties. They authorize the construction of an addition to the property but they didn't authorize. And I don't even know if you can get that authorization from the city probably without an ordinance and or an agreement from the immediately, the owner of the immediate adjacent property. I don't know that you could get an authorization to put something that physically, even a window on the party line because those are not permitted by a fire code. So all of that documentation that you're referring to was part of Mr. Reuter's submission to this board that we have. So the question is in that documentation, or do you have any additional documentation that supports the, the installation of that vent pipe or pipe, whatever it is, and the air conditioning <laughs> that, that protrude across the party line? And that's what the violation relates to, is the fact that you that there has been an intrusion across the party, party line between the two properties. So as you see and hear from those records, I mean, this is a building that the, everything has been in there for that many years. So there's not been any new construction or anything to that property since then. So what we're talking about today is, is things that are in place that have been in place for over 40 years. So, so it's not like there's any new construction where I would have to be filing new permits today. This is all based on 30 years and 40 years ago of something that's been there and has not been touched since then. Yeah, so there hasn't unfortunately, been it, it doesn't make it, it doesn't, then. the age doesn't legalize it. You, you have to take action as a property owner to legalize something that's uh, in violation of so the code. If, if I could um, jump in here, yes. uh, and again, I, 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 I agree. I mean, just and I, I, first of all, I'll wave. I don't need to ask uh, Ms. Fry any questions. Um, okay. I believe, and I, I do agree with her that 
the zoning archive that the city produced was also basically part of their records. I mean, I think they had some additional photographs, but I don't believe that the essential facts are in dispute, which is what we're talking about, is that vent stack uh, along the uh, party line in the rear of the property. So we're not talking about the stuff that was legalized by the encroachment ordinance or any of that. So we're not talking about the garage or any of the other things that were permitted in the uh, in the old zoning file. Um, Again, it's it, the the with something like this, there there would be a process of trying to legalize this. Um, it would almost certainly need the consent of the property owner uh, at sixteen oh two. I'm not in a position to offer legal advice, uh, and I again, the city would strongly urge the fries to because of the nature of this type of problem, um, which is potentially a trespass on sixteen oh two. We would strongly recommend that you get an attorney uh, to try to uh, work this out. But assuming you that you ever could get the consent of 1602, either by getting an easement or something along those lines, then you would still need to get a zoning permit, which would be which would require uh, probably a variance, as well as then you would need to get legalization probably from the board of building standards so it's it's going to be a long process and we understand the difficulty uh the suggestion probably from l and i would be to move the vent stack so it's inside of the building because vent stacks like this on the exterior are not even legal for new restaurants anymore everything has to be through the building so understood you mentioned new new restaurants so this is an existing structure right and so i just want to make sure we all understand and, and hear that oh, yeah. so, what, what, I mean, what we're saying is yeah. that this was never legal uh and the fact well, and it wasn't what visible is a code to of occupancy review when they issue that certificate well again uh, at the time the certificate of occupancy was issued i don't know if this these vents were there uh so There's and again it, it, originally this was a single family house so that didn't have a certificate of occupancy i mean uh but any anyway we're not we're it was we, never a single family okay uh this let's do so this my Mr. point is we Ms. came Ms. Fry, to the city of philadelphia Ms. Fry, Ms. Fry, yes. Ms. Fry, yes. only one person at a time uh Ms. Fry, what mr Rodder is attempting to do is by not giving you legal advice but at the same time trying to give you some direction as to how to resolve the matter what you may not appreciate is that what you're facing here is not easy to resolve, regardless if you've been there for, uh, ma'am, you can't speak while I'm speaking. We have a court reporter who's trying to record every word that's uttered, okay? So what he's attempting to do and what we're trying to offer to you is advice that says, you unfortunately have a really complex matter on your hands. It will not be easily resolved. It is not something that someone who is not an attorney or real estate expert can handle on their own. You need someone with that level of expertise to help you negotiate a settlement with the neighbor and with the city, uh, because what you have is protrusions onto somebody else's property. Whenever that was installed, don't know when it was done, whether it was done, it doesn't appear it was done by permit. It was done very likely illegally when all other work was being done. Not your fault, but unfortunately you're the owner and it's on you and others uh, have to fix it. And so that's where you are. Now, unless you have information today that you uh, that we haven't seen yet that offers an argument that we can uh, hang our hat on. If, if that isn't the case, uh, I'm not sure where we, if we can help a lot. You understand what we're saying? I, I do, but we're also here today looking at something as if you're implying it must like some construction is new construction. And it's a new, new. No, no, no. We aren't implying that at all. Not something that's new. It's been there no, for no. so long. And the person that filed the complaint, that house has been in that family for many years. So that person took over a home, knowing that that structure was there. Ms. So Fry, that is Ms. the Fry, thing. That, yes. Let me speak for. We are fully cognizant that this building has been this way since sometime in around 1983 and that there hasn't been any physical change that you or your fa family made since then. The problem is that when it was done or whoever did it, that particular vent and those air conditioning units did not comply with the code. 
and they don't comply today because of these building requirements. Now, whether the city missed when it issued an, if we assume it issued an occupancy permit, you've been paying taxes on it, you have rental licenses, you haven't been cited for failure to have rental licenses, so you have otherwise been a good citizen of the city since, or you and your family, since sometime in the 1980s. Somehow, and it was said at the very beginning, there was a complaint filed with the city. They, as is their duty, went out and inspected the property and found this condition, which is a clear violation of city codes. And unfortunately, it can't be allowed to remain. The remedy for these conditions, unfortunately, is somewhat, as the chairman has said, complicated. And that's unfortunately why there are people in this city who are attorneys, because that's the kind of assistance you would need is someone who has expertise in dealing with these kinds of matters that relate to city code, encroachments, easement agreements. It's not a simple matter. Now, the only issue is how does this board dispose of your appeal? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Pincus. Uh, Ms. Fry, do you, you understand what we're saying? Do you have any additional testimony, information, or witnesses you want to put on? I think you're making it pretty clear where we need to go as next steps. Yes. And so I'm wondering, though, Mr. Ryder, given the nature of this, it, whether it makes sense for us to, uh, to continue this matter so that she can get representation and somehow develop a new approach to this. Well, I, I mean, I, I think the city would oppose that because um, continuing it, I mean, I, I I would be okay if you wanted to give it, um, you know, a stay of enforcement for 90 days or something, but I don't think that, again, I think it's clear, I mean, unless, and there doesn't seem to be any, you know, information, I mean, everything that was provided, what we saw, again, was documentation, I do, and I, I want to make sure the record's clear, there was a certificate of occupancy issued, and it looks like 1982 or something, uh, that's actually uh and those were sometimes attached to zoning archives. And in this case, it was. Um, but again, I don't know back in the 1980s what they were looking for for COs for multi-tenant dwellings. Um, it, you know, but but that being the case, uh, you know, again, um, what we're talking about is uh, an encroachment onto private property. I mean, if this were over city property, you could uh, talk to the council person and they can get an ordinance to authorize the encroachment. But this is private property. The city doesn't have any authority to allow this, even if we are completely sympathetic and we are to the Fry's position here. We can't order the adjoining property owner to all, to allow this encroachment. That's it's a strictly private matter. So until something is done that a would get that property owner's consent, and then after that, getting both the zoning permit and the building permit, which both of which are probably going to require variances until all that's done. We don't have the authority to allow this. It, it's, 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 there's, there's no waiver uh, or variance that could be granted at this stage. So I would be okay if the board wanted to uh, grant a stay of enforcement for a certain period of time, but we do believe the matter should be Mark city affirmed. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Fry, uh... Just one additional matter, are you, you indicated during your test earlier that uh, you inherited the property from your father. Are you the only individual who inherited this property? As Did you inherit it as an individual or are the other family members also part of that? Me as an individual. Okay, all right, thank you. What I'm going, do you have anything else before we, uh, I'm going to invite the board to an executive no, session. No, I over. just want to make sure that this is something that we're going to have a continuation, um, the continuance, is that what I'm hearing? Because no, you one of the things that- No, 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 yeah. you asked the question. Uh, that has not been decided. Uh, we're going to go into executive yeah. session and discuss it. Then we'll come back and put a decision on the record. Yeah, because just for the record, you mentioned this is going to be complicated and it's going to be expensive. So. One of the things, if I need to get a lawyer, I need to make sure that I have right representation. And I also don't want where, you know, we have a certificate of occupancy and I understand rules and regulations change, but we can't open up a coffin every time there's a rule change. So I want to make sure that I understand you mentioned the certificate of occupancy was done, 
but rules change. So now we have to revert back to something. I just don't want to keep having a, a change. Well, you very well. If you discover new violations, as other people discover new violations, you may in fact have to revisit some of those things. There's no way for us today to tell you that won't ever happen. Uh, as a property owner of an investment property, that's part of your due diligence to see that it completely complies. Uh, so we'll, I'm inviting the board for an uh, executive session. We're going to go off the record uh, for about five minutes. Thank you, thank you, uh, ma'am. Uh, just a moment, okay? Uh, we're going back on the record regarding HA-2022-002684, 1600 South 13th Street. Ms. Fry, you had a final comment, and uh, Mr. Ryder, will you have a final argument? And let's hear from Ms. Fry first. Ms. Fry? I don't have anything to say until I hear. Well, this is your last chance to have something to say in this interview. Well, what I would like to then ask for a continuance um, regarding this matter because it is something that you mentioned earlier is going to be long and complicated. So uh, I would keep in touch with Mr. Bruder during the process. Okay, let me hear from Mr. Bruder. He'll have the final word and his final argument, then we'll vote. Thank sure. you. Sure. Uh, and again, um, I think the board could tell from the pictures and the situation of the properties in question. Um, that this is this is the kind of violation that never would have been picked up by uh, L and I uh, unless they were called out on a complaint. It's entirely hidden from a public right of way. Um, it did appear from the photos that uh, the owner of 1602 uh, at the time, at or around the time the violation was issued, was probably doing some kind of work in the rear of their property. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there was some scaffolding back there, and that's probably what led to. Um, you know, the inspector, you know, this this issue coming up. So um, that being said, uh, as Mr. Pincus, I think, pointed out, uh, once we're called out on a complaint, um, we are the city is obligated to do the inspection. And if they see a violation, um, they are obligated to write the violation. Incidentally, I, I just want to note for the record, I do not see Mr. Pincus. Um, uh, I'm here. Um, he's having a connectivity issue. I see. OK. Uh, um, so, uh, unfortunately, this type of encroachment, as I said before, uh, A, it would need the consent of the adjoining property owner or at least some kind of court order to allow it, um, at, because it never would have been uh, authorized, not even as, as far back as building codes and zoning codes go, you can't get a permit to do something on somebody else's property without, without some kind of explicit consent. Um, and so... Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, it, it, again, I'm speculating, but I assume that uh, Ms. Fry's father, um, that, uh, that back in the 80s, just had the agreement of the adjoining property owner to allow this, and that was all fine. Uh, and then, you know, ownership changed, and, and the current owner's uh, properties uh, back there are not happy, and um, it's a, it is a violation. So again, it will take a lot to legalize it. Um, I'm, the city is not saying um, that it's an immediate safety hazard uh, because again, in that rear part of the property, that's an open rear yard for the adjoining property. Uh, but I, I, I don't know what the rear yard requirements are, but like all of us being equal, they could build back there. And that, that, that's another reason why this becomes a problem. So uh, again, the city would agree to a stay of enforcement um, in the matter, but we don't see any, any reason to continue it here at this board. We're willing to give some time for the fries to try to legalize uh, or get whatever permits or whatever permissions and agreements they need to get to try to legalize it, but they would need to, you know, at least, at least get a design professional who's familiar with the code and probably an, uh, an, an attorney um, to see what they can do about getting this thing legalized. Uh, but I, I can just say I've dealt with this kind of situation before, again, even with, uh, you know, restaurants in Center City, uh, and it's very, very difficult to get this sort of thing approved. It's it's going to be easier and cheaper to just find a way to reroute that bent stack through the through the interior of the building. Um, uh, but so yeah, we would ask the city be affirmed. We we are okay with a, a stay of enforcement at the board's discretion. Okay, thank you very much. We will then poll the board. We'll call the vote. Before we vote, I have a question. I'm sorry. 
I have a question. You don't, I don't understand the terminology. Ms. Ms. Fry, you, you interrupted. Ms. Fry, you interrupted. I have, a, I have a question for Ms. Fry uh, before we vote. In yes. your appeal, you wrote down that you wrote that the work included, and this is the work that was done in 1983, six individual gas-fired hot water heaters. That's what you wrote in your appeal. How many units, apartment units, are in that building? There, there are five. There are five. Okay, the zoning variance that was granted, as I recall, was for four units. So you may have additional problems that are not part of any violation notice that has been written up. But if LNI goes and makes an interior inspection, if you're saying there are five units, you have an additional legal problem that you have to resolve. That's all I just want. I just wanted to clarify that point. I believe we're in a position to vote. Okay, Ms. Bryan, before we vote, did you, did you have a final question? I just didn't understand what Mr. Ruder stated earlier. I just need clarification in lay terminology, that's all. Sure, what it means is that um, if the board in its discretion were to grant a stay of enforcement, that means that for whatever period of that stay uh, the board uh, is willing to give you, if any, um, the city would not seek uh, further enforcement action. Like we wouldn't come after you for fines or take you to court or anything like that. We'll be willing, we will give you whatever period of time the board believes is, uh, you know, um, reasonable in the situation. So in effect, it's the same much. as what you were asking for in a continuance, except we wouldn't come back here. We would just give you time to, to get the situation rectified. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Fry, does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Does that answer your question? It does. Now it just depends on what you're going to agree for okay. time. Okay. All right. Well, now we'll call, we'll call the vote on HA-2022-00268. Eight four sixteen hundred South Thirteenth Street, Lisa Burgess Fry, City Affirm six month stay of enforcement. City Affirm six month stay of enforcement. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to abstain. I didn't hear all the testimony. Okay, thank you very much. City Affirm six month stay of enforcement. City Affirm six month stay of enforcement. City Affirm six month stay of enforcement. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Fry. You understand what just happened? I do. Okay, thank you very much for your patience and your participation today. Have a good afternoon. Uh, and thank you, board. May I, may I uh, excuse uh, Inspector John Chen? Yes, sir. He's excused. Thank you, Inspector. You, you may leave now. Okay, thank you. All righty, Mr. Uh, Wade, what else do we have? That brings us to case number seven, hearing appeal number HA-2022-004618. Sixteen sixty nine Granite Street, Jiao Quan Lin. Okay, uh, I believe Mrs. Uh, Anthony Asiatis is our uh, counsel for the city. That is correct, Chairman Woodson, and the city's witness would be uh, Mr. Ernest Kinkle. Mr. Kinkle, and also the appellant. I don't see the appellant today. Mm. Is the appellant present? Service was made. Thank you. Uh, let's call that again, Mr. Wade, just in case someone didn't hear us. Case number seven, hearing appeal number HA 2022 004 618 1669 Granite G U O Q I A N G L I N. Okay, Mr. Lynn. Uh, there actually there are two cases here, but um, and we don't see anyone by that name on the in the waiting room or anything, do we, Mr. Wade? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, so, what is the city's preference in this matter? Uh, Chairman Woodson, the city would be asking for a city approved, city affirmed rather, for lack of appearance. Okay, uh, Mr. Pinkus, what time do you have? Two forty-one p.m. Two forty-one p.m. Already. Uh, we'll poll the board then regarding HA-2022-004618-16669 Granite Street. Uh, Mr. Lynn, City Affirm, non-appearance. 
City affirm non appearance. 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 Thank you very much. I think that uh, resolves that matter. May, may I just make an observation, Ms. Athan Athanasiatis? Um, you mentioned that there were two cases filed and one of them was marked moot. Is there any possibility that this appellant may have mistaken the moot uh, determination as applying to both cases? Uh, I do not believe so, uh, Mr. Pincus, because uh, there was no formal uh, notice provided or there was been no contact with the appellant to indicate the status of either of the appeals. Um, as far as to my knowledge, the appellant knew both had been filed. Um, so it wasn't until the appellant would have showed up today that he or she would have found out that one of the matters was moot. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, What's what's the next matter? That brings us down to case number 12, hearing appeal number HA 2022 004 681 2441 Mutter Street, Ernest Mist Akani. Okay. Uh, is anyone representing uh, Mutter Street? I assume that uh, Ms. Anthonesiatis will be representing the city in this matter? That is correct, Chairman Woodson. Okay. Uh, do we have anyone responding to uh, the Mother Street address? Ernest Mastacani. Okay, no one responding. Uh, was there service, Mr. Wade? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Anthonesiatis, what is your pleasure? Uh, Chairman Woodson, the city would be again asking for a city affirmed uh, non appearance. I, and I would also just make a note this matter was before the board back in January, where it was continued to today's date. Okay, thank you. Uh, any time do we have, Mr. Pincus? 2 44 p.m. 2 44 p.m. Okay, we will now pull the board regarding HA 2022 004681. 2441 Mutter Street, City of Firm non appearance. 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 Thank you very much. Number six. Ms. Chairman, may I excuse my witness for this matter, Mr. Yes, Francesco? Sir. Yes. Mr. Francesco, you can log off, sir. And I will send you a text. Thank you. Alex, with, with uh, your possible prior commitment, would you like me to read your last case? Uh, you don't need to, Richard. I, that's okay. been rectified during the last case, but thank you. Okay. That brings us to case 16, hearing appeal number HA 2022-001636-900 South A Street, XUEME. Lee. Okay, who's representing the city in this matter? Good afternoon, members of the board. Jim Kelly on behalf of the city. Mr. Kelly, uh, Mr. Lee, who's representing Mr. Lee? Good afternoon, board. Chairman and board members. Robert Cole uh, appearing for Ms. Lee. Okay, Robert Cole, Good thank you, sir. And Ms. Lee is present as well. Okay, thank you very much. All righty, Mr. Kelly, do you have any witnesses for today? Uh, yes, Chairman Woodson. The city will have two witnesses today, Mr. Hartung and Mr. Jo and Ms. Johnson. Okay. Uh, are they both present? Yes, I see. I'll be starting with uh, Mr. Harding. Okay, Mr. Harding, are you present? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to affirm the testimony that you give today? Be the truth to help you die. Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. All ready? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harding, where are you currently employed? I'm employed with the Philadelphia Department of Public Health. My role is a public policy advisor with the Division of Chronic Disease and Injury Prevention, which includes the tobacco control uh, program. And how long have you been working there? Uh, for a little over two years. Okay. Um, and what are your primary duties, responsibilities? My responsibility is to, uh, I'm a lawyer by training, so I advise the program directors and our division director on legal issues related to our uh, program implementation and policy development. Okay. Um, so in your 
in your responsibilities, did you become familiar with the property at 900 South 8th Street? Yes, uh, I became uh, familiar with it because my colleague, Melissa DeMast, who is a uh, tobacco enforcement specialist, keeps uh, records of uh, tobacco applications and denials as a, as a part of our business practice. Okay. And did this appellant um, apply for a tobacco retailer permit? Yes. And what, what was the outcome of that permit application? This application was denied because it's within 500 feet of a, a school. Okay. And uh, was that communicated via letter to the appellant? Yes, it was. Okay. And uh, members of the board, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Just let me know if you're able to see that. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. M Mr. Harding, do you recognize what uh, I'm showing you now? which has been marked as City Exhibit 1? Yes, this is the denial letter uh, that I mentioned we keep as a business practice. Okay, uh, just for the record, can you just, um, the date of notice there, when was it sent? March 8th, 2022. And to whom was it sent? It's sent to 900 Corner Grocery Store. Okay, um, is there a reason contained within the letter for why the permit was denied? Yes, it says the reason for the permit status uh, being denied as it is located within 500 feet of a K2 through 12 school. Okay. Um, and is that 500 foot restriction, is that part of the Board of Health's regulations? Yes, it's part of the tobacco retailer regulations that were passed in uh, 2016. Okay. Um, and, and just to clarify, members of the board, I'll have Ms. Johnson testifying. I understand this map is a little uh, blurry, so I have, a, I have a better map that I'll be having Ms. Johnson testify to. Okay. Um, but just briefly for Mr. Harding, um, the, the property in question here was determined to be within those within the 500 feet. That's correct. Okay. Um, that's really all that I have for Mr. Hardung. I, I, I would offer for Cross. Okay, Mr. Cole, you have Cross? Just briefly. Good afternoon, Mr. Hardin. My name is Robert. Good afternoon. Uh, a question, Mr. Hardin. Do, do you know offhand uh, the distance that was measured according to the uh, city property records from 900 South 8th Street to the nearest school. I think I would have to defer to my colleague, uh, who I believe is going to be the next witness for that question. Okay. And I don't have anything further for you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Kelly, you're muted. So oh, there you go. Yes. Um, I would just next call. I, I don't have anything else for Mr. Harding. I, I would just call Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson. Okay. Ms. Johnson, would you raise your unmute? Yeah, raise your right hand so that you may be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today? Be the truth to help you that. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, Ms. Johnson, where are you currently employed? I currently work um, at the health department in the division of chronic disease and injury prevention. And um, what's your position there? I'm a research and data associate. Okay. And how long have you been working there for? I've been working there for two years now. And what kind of, what are your, you know, primary responsibilities and duties on that job? Uh, my primary job is to um, manage and analyze data related to the tobacco control program. Um, are, are you responsible for creating the, the maps that determine the distance? Yes. For the school zone? Okay. Um, how are those maps created? Um, so I use a software called ArcGIS Pro, which is licensed by Esri, and that's considered the industry standard for um, geospatial analysis. Um, and is that the same software that's available to the public on the city's website? It's created with the same software, yes. Okay, so it's it's outward facing technology as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, are you familiar with the property at 900 South 8th Street? Yes, I'm familiar. And I'm just going to uh, share my screen once again. Ms. Johnson, can you see that? Uh, I think my computer has a little bit of a lag, but okay. Um, let me let me know when the the map comes up. Oh, it just came up for me. Okay, are you able to see that? Uh, yes. Okay, can you please identify what is displayed on the screen right now? Sure. So the um, parcel that's outlined in green is the parcel that um, Christopher Columbus Charter School sits on. And the um, parcel that's outlined in blue is the parcel that 900 South A Street um, sits on. Um, the reddish colored circle that is kind of 
encompassing most of the page is one of the 500 um, feet school buffer zones that was created by the Christopher Columbus Charter School. Um, and that just means that in all directions of that stormwater parcel um, in 500 feet in all ways is basically making up the buffer. And so from this map, I think it's showing that um, 900 South A Street's parcel does actually fall within um, 500 feet of the school. Okay. Um, so what, what is used to determine the location of the, the stores of the parcels? Is it the stormwater parcel? Yes. Okay. Um, could you, for example, stand in front of the store and, and, and determine where those parcel lines would be? No. Okay. How is it determined? Um, I do not actually create the stormwater parcel lines. I think that would be a question for um, someone who works in the water department. I, I'm sorry. Uh, the maps that you create, how are the, how are the how is this one created? Oh, um, specifically using the software that I had mentioned earlier, ArcGIS Pro. Um, it just involves um, some drag and drop, point and click type of um, calculations. Okay. Um, and if can you just identify the, the red line connecting the school to the store? Um, what, is, what is the distance that's listed there? Um, that is 493 um, feet. Okay. And just for the record, that's under 500 feet? Yes. Okay. Um, and if any, just to be clear, if any portion uh, of the parcel is within the pink shaded zone, um, can that parcel obtain a tobacco permit? Um, no. Okay. Um, that's all that I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Johnson. My name is Robert, and I do represent the appellant here. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, Ms. Johnson, we can agree that according to the, I was just going to ask counsel if you could leave the exhibit on the screen for me. One second. Ms. Johnson. Uh, can you again see the uh, document that's on the screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Can we agree that per that document, the minimum distance between 900 South 8th Street and Christopher Columbus Charter School is, if I'm reading correctly, 493.47 feet. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. And can we also agree, Ms. Johnson, that... Uh, that is the minimum. It appears from my review of this document that in fact, the parcel line extends a greater distance than 493.47 feet, depending on where you would measure the parcel line. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, do you have any information as to where the placement of the uh, convenience store, which would be presumably requesting the tobacco permit would be placed within 900 South 8th Street. So the regulations just refer to the stormwater parcel. It doesn't really, to my knowledge, matter where the actual retailer location falls on the parcel. It's just if any part of the stormwater parcel falls within 500 feet of the um, school, then they're considered ineligible for a new tobacco permit. Okay. And Ms. Johnson, I believe you mentioned earlier, you're not responsible for determining the, is it the stormwater parcel line? Did I remember that correctly? That's, that's not a determination that you can make? I do not personally draw them, no. Okay. So if in fact someone drew that line six feet the different way, we wouldn't necessarily be here and the tobacco permit may have been approved. Is that fair to say? I suppose so. Okay. Uh, Ms. Johnson, to your knowledge, uh, is it the city's practice to measure uh, the 500 feet demarcation line at the minimum or some other distance of the property line to the nearest school? For the purpose of creating these hearing exhibits, I think it's to just clarify that the parcel does fall within 500 feet. So yes, I'm asked to draw the minimum distance. Okay. I, I suppose my question, Ms. Johnson, is does the city take into account if in fact a property line uh, actually falls 
at its maximum without a 500 feet uh, radius of a school for purposes of a, of a tobacco license, of course. Can you just repeat the question? I'm sorry. Does the city take into account if a property line falls without 500 feet or more than 500 feet from a school for purposes of a, a tobacco retailer permit? If you don't. I guess just to clarify, are you asking, would we consider measuring from a different point? I am. Um, sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Johnson, do you have any knowledge as we talk here today uh, whether in fact at any point in the uh, the boundary line of 900 South 8th Street that, excuse me, 900 South 8th Street, that in fact there is greater than 500 feet distance from Christopher Columbus Charter School? Yes, I think it's pretty clear in the map that the most like um, eastern part of the uh, parcel of 900 South A Street does not fall within the school zone. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. I don't have anything further for you. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Kelly, any uh, additional witnesses? Uh, no additional witnesses, but I, I just would have uh, a couple questions on redirect for, for sure. Ms. Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, so, Ms. Johnson, I'm going to direct your attention to what's been previously marked as city exhibit, I believe, number four. Um, and just for the record, this is from um, the 2016 regulations um, set forth by the Department of Public Health uh, Board of Health. Um, would you be able, Ms. Johnson, would you be able to just read this this highlighted portion? And for the record, this was my highlighting. It's not highlighted in the in the regulation. Yes, it says the stormwater parcel line of the location for which the tobacco retailer permit is sought is not within 500 feet of the stormwater parcel line of a K through 12 school. Are there any exceptions <coughs> to that based on where a store might be located within the within the parcel? Not to my knowledge. Okay, that's all that I have. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Mr. Cole. Uh, Nothing to worry, Cross. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Cole, do you have an opportunity now to put on your case? Uh, the appellant would call briefly Lisa Lee. Ms. Lee, uh, unmute and raise your right hand. Yes. Uh, please give us your, uh, uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you get today be the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you. Place your hand down, but I do have a question for you. Uh, okay. The name on the screen is different than Lisa Lee. Would you mind uh, explaining the difference? That's my legal name, but my legal name is called Xue Mei Li. A lot of people, it's difficult to uh, pronounce it, so I'm going to go by my nickname, Lisa Lee. Okay. Well, pronounce your, your legal name again, please. Xue Mei Li. Uh, you're breaking Xue up. Xue Mei Li. Xue Mei Li. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for purposes of the court re recording, just note the uh, Lisa will be used throughout the hearing. Mr. Kelly. Okay, uh, Mr. Cole. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Lisa. Go good afternoon. Lisa, are you the owner of real estate located at 900 South A Street? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you also the owner of a convenience store placed at that location? Yes, I am. And you made a request for a tobacco retailer permit at that location, which was denied and brings us to this hearing today. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, Lisa, I, I'd like you to tell the chairman and the board members why we're here today. Why are you asking for a tobacco retailer permit at that location? Okay, from uh from from my uh last tenant who renting my store, they do have the tobacco license there. That's uh and also you know this is a a convenience store, so we want to you know um do you know convenience to all the neighborhood. So lots of customer here can you know uh get what you know all the uh product they need from the store. And also, it's a small school, so we need to sell like everything, you know, um, so to make a profit. Otherwise, we cannot survive there. So, so also, um, 
I mean, from different the map zoom, I think that this, because you can see the map, right? The, the, the line is 400. I'm sorry, I would have, I don't think there's a question. Yeah, Mr. Cove, yeah, uh, unless that's the question you've asked, I'd ask Ms. Lee to rely on you for direction in this. Of course, L Lisa, um, mm -hmm. you understand from earlier testimony that uh, at a minimum from the boundary line of 900 South 8th Street until, excuse me, to Christopher Columbus Charter, Charter School is a distance of 493.47 feet. Is that correct? Uh, yes, until I just know now. Okay. Now, and, and you wanted to say something about how there's a greater distance between those two parcels. Is that is that correct? But you know, the actually place is is greater than five hundred square feet. You can see this from the map, right? Like it's um like L style. But you know, from the exactly the store distance to the to the charter school is more than five hundred. Obviously, I don't know how they measurement the the distance from there to. 900 South A Street, but you can see the corner a little bit, the boundary line. That one is, for me, from, from my knowledge, I think it's going to be my neighbor's backyard, but somehow it's showing like this corner of the, the map. So the actual place is definitely greater than 500 square feet. Okay. I don't have anything further for you, Miss Lee. Thank you. Uh, just one note for the record, it's not 500 square feet, uh, it's 500 feet in distance. Uh, Mr. Kelly, any cross-examination? I don't have any cross, just brief closing. Okay, Mr. Cole, any additional witnesses? Uh, no, Chairman. Okay, well, what we would then ask you to do, if you have any closing argument, and then after you've completed, Mr. Kelly will give a, a closing. Thank you. Uh, your turn, Mr. Cole. If you have any closing argument, if not, I'll move on to Mr. Kelly. Forgive me. I, I thought you mentioned Mr. Kelly first. My apologies. Yes. Uh, if, if I may, uh, according to the documentation provided by the city, we're looking at a distance between the two parcels of 493.47 feet. Obviously, that's not 500. I understand the city's position. However, uh, the evidence that was adduced here today indicates that the demarcation lines uh, were uh, provided by uh, someone other than uh, Ms. Johnson or Mr. Harden, who testified here today. Uh, there's been no evidence from any source that these stormwater parcel lines are exactly accurate. Testimony from Ms. Lee was that, in fact, uh, she believes the uh, demarcation line provided by the city is actually not 900 South A Street, but a neighboring property. If that's the case, uh, there's no dispute uh, between the parties here today uh, that depending on where you measure, uh, there will be a greater than 500 feet distance between 900 South A Street and the school in question. If that were the case and the property was measured a different way, the tobacco retailer permit would have been uh, awarded to, to Miss Lee and we wouldn't be here today. Um, I'd ask the uh, board to consider that information as well as the fact that this is a convenience store uh, that benefits the neighborhood and of course benefits the owner as well uh, if they are unable to have a tobacco retailer permit. Um, their business is likely going to fail, and that's just the reality of the situation. I thank the chairman and the board for its time here today. Thank you. Mr. Kellen? Thank you, Chairman Woodson. Um, so based upon the testimony and the evidence presented today, uh, the city is seeking a city of firm. So the Philadelphia City Code grants the Board of Health the discretion to adopt any other requirement that it deems appropriate for the protection of public health. The Board of Health in 2016, pursuant to that regulation, uh, I'm sorry, pursuant to that, made a regulation stating that the health department shall not issue a new tobacco retailer permit if the stormwater parcel line of the location for which the tobacco retailer permit is sought is not within 500 feet 
of the stormwater parcel line of a K through 12 school. Um, the appellant today on direct examination has acknowledged that the distance on the map, which uses the stormwater parcel lines, is 493 feet and not 500 feet. I'm willing to concede that it's close. Sure, I understand that. Um, but lines have to be drawn somewhere. Um, and the subject premise today is clearly within the restricted zone of those lines. It's apparent from the face of the map and from the testimony of Ms. Johnson um, that was not disputed in any way. Um, there was no other evidence or no other map to indicate anything else. The stormwater parcel line is what's clearly uh, required to be used by the health department's regulations. Um, and that's what we have today. Um, any portion of any parcel within that pink shaded area um, means that it's within that school zone buffer and cannot obtain such a permit. Um, and so as a result, we're seeking a city affirm today. Thank you very much. We will now poll the board regarding HA-2022-001636, 900 South 8th Street. Lisa Lee, City Affirm. City Affirm. City Affirm. City Affirm. City Affirm. City Affirm. Thank you very much. The vote is the unanimous City Affirm. Uh, Mr. Cole, as you know, you have the right to appeal the decision of the board to CCP if you choose. Thank you very much for your participation and your uh, patience. Thank you. May, may my client and I be excused? Yes, sir. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, all. Good afternoon. So, so, wait. This is our last case. This is hearing appeal number HA 2022 004676. 5038 Chestnut Street, Rudolph M. Griffin. Okay. Uh, do we have anyone, Mr. Griffin present? Mr. Griffin yes. present. Ms. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, the city is represented today by Ms. Uh, Anthony Asiatis. Uh, do you have a uh, witness today, Ms.? I do, Chairman Woodson. Uh, it would be Mr. Ernest Kinkle who will be testifying on behalf of the city. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kinkle, uh, I'd like you to raise your right hand, uh, but also as you prepare in court, please remove your hat because this is a formal setting. Thank you. Uh, do, you do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Can you place your hand down? Uh, before we start, though, uh, Mr. Griffin, I uh, should swear you in as well. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. You can place your hand there. Okay, let's begin. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Woodson and board. Uh, this matter was last before the board on March 2nd, 2023, uh, where it was continued uh, to give Mr. Griffin um, the opportunity to get an updated plumber's report. Um, by way of background, uh, kept Mr. Calvin Alexander testified on behalf of the city Philadelphia Water Department. Uh, regarding a notice of defect that was issued on November 1st, 2022 uh, for a defective lateral. Um, and he testified at that hearing. I would just ask that that testimony be incorporated by reference um, here today. Uh, we're here today as an emergency hearing uh, because the Philadelphia Water Department went out to the location on March 27th, 2023 and shut off water service to the property. Uh, due to a deep undermining um, of the street, there was a cave-in and an undermining that spanned from Mr. Rudolph's property, 5038 Chestnut Street, to across the street, 5039 Chestnut Street, which posed a dangerous condition. Um, and we are here today. I would also just point out to the board, um, Mr. Rudolph did obtain an updated plumber's report. Uh, that will be presented, and even within the plumber's report, it indicates, and I quote, joint before sewer is broken. Um, at this time, I would be calling Mr. Ernest Kinkle. Okay. Mr. Kinkle, please state and spell your name for the record. Ernest Robert Kinkle, E-R-N-E-S-T-K-I-N-K-E-L. And by whom are you employed? Uh, City of Philadelphia, Philadelphia Water Department. And how long have you been employed by the Philadelphia Water Department? Uh, over 10 years. Okay. And what is your current job title, Mr. Kinkle? 
water field customer service supervisor. Okay. And how long have you been working in that position? Uh, over two years now. And what are your responsibilities? Day-to-day uh, -day operations of the inspectors underneath me uh, who enforce notice of defects, overlook notice of defects, and daily operations out in the street, such as cave-ins, depressions, water leaks, leaks in the street. Okay. All Is it oh, I apologize. That's all right. All aspects of water. Okay. Customers complaints. Okay. And is it fair to say the customer field service is the one that performs reinspections once a notice of defect is issued? Yes, ma'am. Every 10 days. Okay. And what was your prior position with the Philadelphia Water Department? I was a customer, uh, I was an inspector, basically the gentlemen, the gentlemen and ladies that are on me doing the inspections. Okay. And are you familiar with the address we're here for today, 5038 Chestnut Street? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And how are you familiar with this particular property? Uh, because of the notice of defect for the defective lateral that was brought to my attention uh, okay. earlier in the week from you and all the investigation that I did prior. Okay. Now, I'm going to be showing you some photographs, uh, Mr. Kinkle. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I'll represent to you, um, you did not take these photographs, but you've had a chance to review the photographs? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And these photographs were taken by Inspector Vaughn Neal on March 27th, 2023. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me just share my screen. Okay. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. Do you see the photograph that I'm showing you, Mr. Kinkle? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll, I'll show you all three photographs and then we can go through them individually. Okay. No problem. I'm just going to step around my cube real quick. Take this hoodie off. I'm dying. Excuse me. Okay. My apologies, everyone. That's okay. Do you see the second photograph I'm sharing with you? No, it's still the same picture. Picture. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kinker, would you mind adjusting your screen a bit so your full images? At the moment, your head is. is uh, Sorry, my. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Do you see? This photograph, Mr. Kinkle, with the foot on the bottom of the photograph. He's muted. Mr. Ernest. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you see the photograph I'm showing you? That's photograph one. Yes, ma'am. This is photograph two. And this is photograph three. Uh, the image didn't change. It's still photograph well, one. Well, it's there. There's feet in both photographs, so but there was no movement on the screen. Nothing happened. Okay. Yeah, there's no movement. Is there a, a an orange cone on the right hand side of this photograph? Yes. yes. Okay, so that would be photograph three. Um, the cone is in the middle of the photograph. Do we? Is that is that no. visible? No. Nothing has changed. You may need to uh, do, uh, take that one off, then click on the other photographs individually. Individually. But they haven't, tra they haven't transitioned. We yeah. only see a small portion of the cone. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Just give me the board's indulgence. I'm just pulling up the photographs individually. Okay. Okay. 
Does everyone see this photograph? Yes. Okay. Yes. This photograph, the, the cone is on the right-hand side of the photo and it's only partially visible? Correct. Okay. And now I'm sharing a second photograph. where the cone is on the right side of the photo and there appear to be two feet on the bottom portion of the photograph? Yes, ma'am. Is that visible to everyone? Yes. yes. Okay. And then the final photo I will be showing. is an image where the cone is visible entirely on the sidewalk and there are two homes in the background of the photograph. Yes. Now, Mr. Kinkle, you've had an opportunity to see these photographs, correct? Yes, ma'am. And do these photographs fairly and accurately show the cave-in um, that is shown at 5039 Chestnut Street on March 27, 2023? Uh, yes, ma'am, but it is 5038 Chestnut, correct? Well, the, the property owner appealing here today is located at 5038 Chestnut Street. But you just said 5039. I'm just making sure we're... The, the cave-in is located oh. across the street. Is that correct? At 5039 yes, Chestnut Street? Yes, ma'am. Between 39 and 37. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what are the dimensions of the cave-in that I showed in the photograph? Uh, three feet wide, three by three, three feet deep. And it stretches. It's undermining all the way across to the street, the other side to the uh, gentleman's property. And gentlemen, you're referring to the property at 5038 Chestnut Street, correct? Yes, ma'am. So there was an undermining that was visible to the inspectors that went out on March 27, that was three feet deep and at least 10 feet wide, spanning across the street of Chestnut? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And water service was shut off. Why was water service discontinued at that property? Because of the hazardous situation, meaning the undermining that keeps basically ripping the street out from underneath of it. And it's stretching, obviously. Usually when a situation like this happens, it happens out of the property, this is stretching all the way to the other side. Okay. So that's pretty okay. serious. Now, Mr. Kinkle, I had also shared with you, um, Mr. Rudolph had submitted a, a plumber's report. Do you recall reviewing that, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me just pull that up for you. Okay. Let me share my screen. Ms. Athanasiadis, I yes. just want to confirm the appellant is, is that, I think his name is Griffin is a, and his, oh. first name, his first name is Rudolph. I apologize. Um, I've spoken a few times to Mr. Griffin. We've, be, we've been on the first name base. So yes, you are correct, um, Mr. Wood, Mr. Pincus. It is um, Rudolph M. Griffin. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, and I'm now sharing my screen. Do you see this, uh, Mr. Kinkle? Yes, Goodman Plumman. Exactly. And this was an updated plumber's report that was submitted by Mr. Griffin, the appellant, and he provided it to me. Can you please indicate in the body of this report what it states, sir? Sure. Water Department issued a citation for sinkhole across the street. Lateral was camered from curb trap. It was camered to city sewer. We located slant across the street. Joint before sewer is broken. Rest of the lateral looks good. Customer has video. Okay. 
That's all I have for you, Mr. Kinkle. Okay. I don't for, for cross. Mr. Griffin, do you have any cross examination of Mr. Kinkle based on his testimony? Uh, I, I, they said if you said a sinkhole was 10 inches, 10 feet wide or something. Did, did, did I hear that correct? Well, you need to ask him a specific question. Ask, ask Mr. Kinkle your question. That's what question I'm trying to ask. Did he say that sinkhole was 10 feet wide? Mr. Kinkle? Uh, no, sir. The, the sinkhole itself, the cave-in that we identify by, is three by three size. It's undermined it underneath, visibly, 10 feet. You can see that there's no dirt under this street. Towards the uh, Mr. Griffin's property. Anything else, Mr. Griffin? Uh, my wife will take a picture of it now, but uh, she's not back yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, any additional witnesses, Ms. Anthanasiatis? I, I do not have any additional witnesses. Uh, Chairman Woodson, I would just uh, offer into evidence um, the previous exhibits that were used from the last hearing um, that I incorporated by reference, the three photographs presented here today, and the updated plumber's report. I, I do, uh, do, what is the date on that letter from uh, Goodman Plumbing? Uh, one second, sir. Could you put that up again, please, Ms. Sure. Anthanasiatis? Sure. Okay. It was sent by fax. The, so just for clarification, the original report was November 5th, 2022. And this report does not seem to have a date on it. Um, okay, Mr. Griffin, do you know when that report was submitted? Is, I'm sorry. Uh, I have not. The plumber, okay. what, what I understand, when the plumber went back to his office, this is the report he submitted. I called them <laughs> after the second of our meeting. And I had them I had request them to send me a copy of what he turned in. And this is what okay. they sent me. Okay. Now there is in the top left hand there's corner. There's a date there. There's a yeah. date. Yeah. I'm wondering, Ms. Uh, Athanasiadis, is that a fax date or a transmission date of some sort? Top I, left. Yes. The March 21st, uh, 2023. Yes. I believe that's the fax transmittal date. Yes. Okay. Could you, okay. Could you go scroll down, stop? Could you stop that 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 section? Yes. Water department issued a citation for sinkhole across the street. Lateral was from camera. Lateral was camera from curb trap. It was camera to the city sewer. So if we read this, I guess I don't know whether it's Mr. Kankel, he's the the inspector. I assume we're talking about the curb trap on Mr. Griffin's property at 5038 to the connection into the city sewer. We're not talking about, it says joint before sewer. We're talking about the sewer line solely from Mr. Griffin's property to, um, to the city sewer, not across the street. Would, is that a... Is that a correct reading of this report? Is that, is that to me, sir? Yes. yes. So yes, that, that's from his plumber. That's not, the city issued him a notice of defect for a defective lateral. This is his plumber stating that. Can but yes, can... his plumber cameraed from his curb trap to the city sewer, correct. And noticed his joint broke. Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right, Mr. Griffin, uh, do you have anything information you'd like to offer? I'd like to say that I was submitted a summons for my lateral. And even on this paper here, like I was told before, my lateral was in good condition. So the summons I received was for a defective lateral. This says my lateral was in good condition. I don't know what else to say. Well, then what did that report just say that we just saw? There was a broke, but it said my ladder was in good condition. 
a summons I received was for my lateral. Okay. Uh, okay. Before sewer is broken, joint before sewer is broken, and that's your, I believe that's referencing your lateral joint is broken. I, I, I don't want to try to guess. I, I don't really know nothing about okay. this. So I don't want to try to say something wrong. Okay. I don't want to now, try to guess. Uh, the homeowner is responsible for everything from the sewer uh, system back to their house. You understand that, correct? Sir. Mr. Well, Chair. I, I, yes, sir. Can we put that back up again, please? Yeah, we probably need to leave it up until we I, I, I will leave it yeah. up, Chairman Woodson, and then if there's... Matter of fact, everyone reads differently. I, I'm yeah. reading it. Um, was cam Lateral was camera from curb trap. Was camera to the city sewer. We located slant across the street joint before the sewer is broken. The rest of the lateral looks good. Customer has video. So it can it's, it appears to me that it says that they located the joint across the street on the slant, that joint before the sewer is broken. The rest of the lateral looks good. Right. So the issue is who's responsible for that uh, that joint that's broken? And that's my question to Mr. Is it Kinkle, sir? I don't want to. It's all right. That's uh, me. Yes, sir. So Kinkle. yes, sir. So the sewer is located right there where the joint is. It's across the street. That's all of his lateral. No, the joint. Who's responsible for the joint? That would be his joint to his lateral that's tied okay. into the city sewer across right. the street. Yes, sir. All right, so that's uh, in that diagram we normally see, correct? Uh, Ms. Anthony, that's, do you have access to those diagrams uh, that we routinely put up? Sure. Uh, that one, may have been in the March, the early hearing. Sure, give me a second, Chairman, okay. and I will pull that up for you. Thank you. Sure. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, you uh, need to scroll down some. Yes. Okay. 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 All yeah. right, Mr. Kinkle, could that joint, could you explain what we just read in reference to that joint that's across the street on the slant? Okay, so obviously with it being picture the street now, Chestnut Street being a big street, so it's a lot of pipe. So am I on mute? No, so, no, we hear you. Okay. So obviously there's only so much feet of pipe you could put before you have to connect it to another piece and get it over to the sewer. So that's what they mean by the joint. So somewhere along all his pipe that's connecting to the sewer, the city sewer that's across the street from his property that all the properties are connected to, somewhere along his pipe, his lateral, the joint is broke. So it could be that the reference, the joint between letter G and H, no, sir. That's that's the vent pipe and the curb trap. Right. I'm just trying to make sure. The, so the lateral, the lateral is from D to E. D to E. So it would be a, anything that's adjoining that. Okay. I just want to make sure so that he yeah. understands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the word, the phrase across the street, what does that really mean? Right. That's maybe confusing a bit. Uh, what do you mean by across the street? The sewer is located, his pro the cave-in and the sewer is located on the other side of the street. From, from the his house? Yes, sir. Okay, so we say across the street, you mean across the street from Mr. Griffin's house? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Okay, I just needed to understand. So when they, I, it appears then that whoever took the video, uh, did Mr. Um, the contractor, uh, Mr. Goodman, uh, he began on Mr. Griffin's sidewalk and yes, his bit pipe where the entryway was and then went across the street. Okay. He started at H and ended at E, the city sewer. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Mr. Griffin, do you understand what we've just right. discussed? I, I guess so Mr. Pinkman. Pinkman. Wait, 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 just Mr. Griffin, well, I was just asking him to respond to me just a minute, Mr. Pinkman. Mr. Griffin? My problem is when I, my, my ladder goes to the main sewer line. Correct. The leak, the oh, let's leave, that up. let's leave, that, leave up. that up. Yeah, leave that up. We're trying to make sure he's clear. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Griffin, I cut you off. My apologies. So please start again. My lab, my, my ladder will go to the main sewer line. The sewer line is, just, is bricks going all the way down. Yes. On the other side where the bricks are, that's where his piss hole was. On the other side of the sewer. By his line, by his sewer line. Okay, so it, you believe that it the defect is your uh, is the neighbor across the street from you, not your your uh, area, not your pipe. Yes, sir. The, the defect happened. The city came through the street and they chopped our street up and they redone it. After they done that, he had a leak on his side over there. That's when that happened. Okay, and before before we take this down, Mr. Kinko. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, are you certain that is his pipe? Is is the main sewer running down the middle of the street, or is it running down on the opposite side of, from his house? So to determine a defect in a lateral like this, they determined by a dye test. Okay. They dye tested the cave in. And they had a camera in the sewer, and it showed through his joint in the city sewer. So that's how they determined that. Yes, sir. Okay. But is, do you know if that uh, ladder was running down the middle of the street, Chestnut Street, or is it on one side or the other? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Word. Is the main ladder running down the middle of the street, or is it more to one side or the other? Across, so uh, Chestnut Street is east and west, correct? So it would be correct. running north and south, north or south. So if, okay. if I may, I think you meant the main sewer line is on is oh. on the north side. The north side, right on the yeah, north okay. side of the street. And so the, the camera, the man also said, the Mr. Plummer, Mr. Goodman said, the lateral is clear or clean, I think he said. But he also said that joint before sewer is, is broken. broken. But on the other hand, he also said lateral is clear. Does, is right. he saying, well, the lateral, other than the joint, I mean, maybe, it, it, I guess it could be can, could be read that the lateral is good all the way into the connection, and that the bad joint is the joint from the line that is that that Mr. Tennant pointed out maybe for the property across the street. The street, correct. So is this for me? Yes. Okay. So usually when they do the die test, they don't die test just one property. They obviously analyze several properties if not the whole street so then my question is what are the other property addresses included that they did a dye test on because the the, so, the report so, similar sort of indicates that it was from across the street and his lateral was in good condition so Ms. anastasia you have a question or a comment no i was just going to object as to I, pulling up records for any other notices okay. issued um, we're here for this particular notice, and I mean, I will redirect Mr. Kinkle once the board is done questioning him regarding the plumber report submitted okay. by Mr. Griffin for clarification. Okay. Well, I mean, our question should be restricted to this address, unless there is something in the report uh, that supports or both the city's position that incorporates information about another address, we will focus on uh, Mr. Griffin's property. But I just think that we need to, because of the wording of the plumber's report, it's a little confusing. Uh, and I can see how Mr. Griffin would be confused uh, if his plumber says that using the term lateral is okay, except for the joint. And the issue then becomes, where is that joint located? And who's responsible for the joint? That's correct. That's correct. So, And, and I guess I'd like Mr. Kenkel to, to look at that language as well because the only camera report or report of the camera inspection was done by Mr. Goodman. We don't have a city camera inspection. If you read this language, we located slant across the street, joint mm -hmm. before sewer is broken. Could one interpret that language to be the joint for the property at 5039 and not Mr. Griffin's property? No, oh, so with that being said, obviously everybody has their own individual systems. So with he's identifying his slant, his joint, he's in his curb trap. He's starting at his property and making his way to the city sewer. You can't go then and then intrude into the neighbors across the street, I would imagine. You, you, you know what I mean? They stay on 
they're okay. where they're at. So on that being said, when they de determine and they do these dye tests in the cave-ins, it will show through anybody that's de defective. So if, the, if this cave-ins across the street in front of 59 and 59 has a defect, it would also show through 59. By that, they'll use different dyes. Who determines which? Uh, Mr. Griffin, a uh, question for you, sir. Mr. Yes, Griffin, sir. Uh, were you yes, there sir, when the yeah? Were you there when the plumber uh, did the uh, video? Yes, sir. Did you see him uh, put the video camera down your trap? Yes, sir. Did he do it across the street? No, sir. Okay, so all of his information is based on camera that went down your track where he saw the broken joint, correct? Uh, that's that's my knowledge. I mean, well, you, you, you basically are saying yes, yes, you can't now I was, say no. Uh, Pardon me? Been, I was here. We so, say Mr. that again, Wilson. you broke up. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Please, please respond again, Mr. Griffin, you, you broke up. We couldn't hear you. I was here when he did do it. Okay. That's what I wanted to confirm. Okay, Mr. So, Mr. Chair, yes, I, I do for Mr. Kinkle. Um, you mentioned 59 across the street. Um, did the water department put a camera down 59? I mean, there's no evidence present here to say anything or any, and, and as Ms. Anastasia said, we're not here for the other two properties, but we're, we're going on your word as testimony that mm -hmm. those other two properties tested to be okay with no breaks. So so the joint is part of his lateral. When the plumber's saying that, the joint is part of his lateral. I don't think, that, Mr. Tennant, there was no testimony regarding any right. violation and, at any other address. No, I, they may I have understand breaks. that. I, right. But yeah. he said, yeah, but, but Mr. Kinkle said that the city um, line is on the north side of the street. And if, if I'm correct, I'm trying to figure that would be on the opposite side of where 38 is. Correct me, Mr. Kinkle. Uh, yes, sir. So okay, that so that's a said, long way. We don't camera people's property. We camera our infrastructure and determine by die test. So we wouldn't go in the 59 and camera. That would be for them if they got served a notice of defect to do what Mr. Griffin did and get his own plumber to come up with his conclusion. We so don't. just a general question. When the main line sewer line is on the north side of the street that would mean the lateral running on 38 side on the southern side there's a longer piping lateral from the south side of the street to the main sewer than it would be from the north side yes because sir. it's a shorter distance yes sir that okay yes sir all right thank you no thank you anything no else mr griffin uh i'll say one more thing there was a sinkhole at 59, they patched that one up. Like I said, the city came through, through down the street. The sinkhole became a neighbor's, a neighbor's house. That's how that happened. I never had a problem. My, there's, just, there's no problems in front of my house to be seen. Okay. Uh, and I think the plumber said that. Uh, but the plumber also said that, and you acknowledged that he used your uh, air vent to put a camera in, and he followed your pipe all the way to the other side. And there was a break at yes, some sir. point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? No? Okay. That's what about, about, so, that's all I can say. Okay. That's our summer. Okay. Uh, Ms. Athanasiadis, anything else? Any final argument? I, I would just um, reiterate his own plumber's report indicates the joint before his the sewer is broken. Rest of lateral looks good. Mr. Kinkle testified that that joint is part of the lateral. I've shown, given you photographs to look at that show that how the undermining occurs and why it was necessary to shut off water service. Even though it's spanning across the street, it's undermining the street and it became a health hazard. And I would just ask for a city affirmed in this matter. The plumber's report speaks for itself. Mr. Kinkle credibly testified, and there's been no evidence presented um, to indicate that anything to the contrary regarding the notice of defect that was issued. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else before we call the vote? May I stop sharing the screen, Chairman Woodson, or does yes, the board? Yes, I think we finally finished with it. Yes. 
Could I request a brief executive session? Uh, yes. I'm going to go off the record for until 3.45. Hey, beautiful. I'm still. Mr. Klein, you're on, not on me. Okay, thank you very much. If there's nothing further from anyone, we will call the vote on HA 2022 004676, 5038 Chestnut Street, Rudolph M. Griffin, City Affirm. Sorry about my camera, but I, I can vote. It's city affirmed. City affirmed. City affirmed. City affirmed. City affirmed. Thank you. It's all city affirmed. Mr. Griffin, the vote is city affirmed, which means your appeal has failed. Uh, you may appeal our decision if you choose. And if you need information as to how to do that, call the LNI office and they will help you uh, in terms of providing appeal information to you. Thank you very much for your patience and your participation. Thank you. I think that concludes our business for today. Thank you, Mr. Kinko. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great yes. day. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Anastasius, thank you. Thank for your you, diagrams. Mr. Kennan. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Wade, is that it for today? Yes, sir. Okay.